boy oh boy oh boy here we go let's let's lower that music down a little bit just get a nice uh nice hint of music while i'm here I, is anybody on I, I i hope not i fear not or i hope not i do not know whether i dare to hope or fear either way welcome folks to what will hopefully be the very first crash free uh version of uh what's so great about dot 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 the game which i try to make up on the spot uh, the game, the show, the thing, the thing, the stream that I made up kind of on the spot as we go, and which uh, mostly consists of me opening up PDF files, looking at them and going, huh, oh. and hopefully we'll get some people in chat to also go, huh, oh, with me as well. Tonight, for example, we are presented with a couple of games. Uh, first is this one that's here that I should really, there we go. That's better. Uh, <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks Adobe. Uh, so we've got two games tonight. Tonight we've got Banana Light, written by our very own David Donnelly, uh, of, uh, of Fandible fame. You may, uh, know Fandible from our, um, our logo up there. And, you know, the channel, and presumably if you're here and watching this, you're, you're one of our people. You're one of us. You're, you're, you're one of the, the people that, that, that listens to the show, that is here, present with us. Uh, I certainly hope, uh, 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 you are... Uh, in fact, the target audience is otherwise you're gonna be very confused by, by what's going on here tonight. Uh, so let's go ahead and besides uh, Banana Light, we've got a second game, an actual uh, game. Yeah, you heard me, Dave. An actual game uh, known as, uh, let me go ahead and bring it up here, uh, Gun and Slinger, created by Nevin Holmes. So we're gonna, gonna take a quick look at Gun and Slinger as well tonight before we're over. So we'll be here for a better part of an hour, probably a little bit less probably a little bit more we'll see we'll figure it out we're still we're still getting used to the flow of the stream and uh oh hey explorers wanted <laughs> welcome in my friend an actual game in fact um the, 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 uh, here present on screen what we're going to talk about first though is whatever the fuck is happening up here um this is this is a whole a whole thing but welcome in i'm glad i'm not just talking to myself and there's somebody else here present to, to witness uh, what's about to happen. Now, you, those of you who, who may know me from, uh, from my personal channel, in which I have all sorts of funky, uh, funky little shacks, um, may, may know that I'm, uh, I usually have little special effects and we have, uh, things you can redeem and all that stuff. Uh, this is a serious show. We don't have any of that stuff yet. I'm working on it. I'm working on it is, I think, what I'm trying to say here. Uh, it, it, they will be including for example we still don't have we still don't have uh, 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 proper emotes um I'm trying to grab the ones that we have on our discord server uh but I also don't have a command for the discord server yet there's so much I have so much work to do still on this channel but instead of doing the work I'm doing this uh because I, I well it's, it's important to get the content out for the people for you your viewer I wanted to do this for some reason there's a little audio hiss whenever I speak I know I know it's it's Okay, let me try something. Let me try some. Oh, crap. Where's my phone? Okay, let's see. Let's see if this helps. Thank you. Yes, no. I mean, th that hiss should have been there. It's just probably more noticeable uh, in this stream because I don't have a game going on. Uh, let me see if my... Maybe... Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh, I I've done my best to... Uh... There we go. Ooh, it's still it's a lot of here. Anyway, I've done my best to... Let me know if that's any better. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Uh, I, I've done my best to uh, uh, make the hiss go away, um, but there's several layers of noise reduction going on because it's crazy hot, and um, I, I, I would still like to stream but leave my air conditioning on. So um, I turned it off right now because it's it's cool, and we're only doing this for an hour. And this isn't exactly a strenuous uh, stream. Uh, so I, th I think I'm okay for an hour without the AC. But if I if I if I feel even a single drop of sweat coming down, uh, I'm turning it back on. Y'all are gonna have to deal with the hiss, at least until 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 no summer is over, or preferably global warming is no longer a thing. <laughs> uh, alas and alack. But yes, I mean leave it leave it to a fellow podcaster to immediately notice the audio issues. Yeah, look, man, I tried, I tried. It's, it's, it's only so much I can do. Uh, and trust me, there's there's multiple layers of of noise reduction, compression, gating, etc., uh, etc., et going on here, just to make me sound as good as I do, 
I, also considering that I have my microphone is way up there and it's not a boom mic. I, I might I might actually in, invest in a proper boom mic. This is literally just like as this is supposed to be like this from my, like you should be seeing it on camera right now. You're not. So I think part of the hiss is coming from the fact that I am uh, having to turn up the gain a bit uh, in order for you to, to hear me properly and keep my mic out of frame. Because despite the fact that I know in my heart that audio is more important than video, I can't help it. I don't want my mic in frame. Eh. Hey folks. Hey folks. Let's talk about what this game, what this uh, show is about. <laughs> let's, let's talk about uh, our very first PDF, our inaugural PDF, our inaugural game. Because so far, so far the stream has yet to crash. Holy crap balls. That's amazing. That's, 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 that's. Uh, mind blowing the fact that, because I don't know what was going on on Tuesday, but whatever it is, it stopped going on now. It beats me, uh, though that also means that quite possibly, uh, yes, right? Uh, we'll get to those very shortly. Uh, it, it, it's quite possible this game is cursed, to be fair. Uh, if, so let, let's let's go ahead and, and uh, admire it. We got the cover first of all, visual design here by William Coffing, uh, our very own uh, Billy. Uh, did the visual design for this, uh, but all the wording, all the rules such as they are, uh, and the rest of the system is, of course, our very own David Donnelly. Um, and he, uh, as some of you may know, in fact, some of you may even have been present during the stream, during the office hours in which uh, this game was proposed, uh, when he was given two words, banana light, banana and light, and he had to come up with a tabletop RPG off the top of his head, and then eventually turned it into his his notebook game. And so if there are a few things that uh, David likes, it's bad jokes, puns, and of course, acronyms. And it shows here. It shows here in the name of this game. Banana Light. Acronym, standing for Boat Adjacent Nanosecond Altering Nonsense Adventures. All of which is accurate, by the way, I've discovered. Uh, and then light, which stands for what this game is a laughter inducing gimmicky hastily written tabletop RPG. It checks out every single thing on this on this title uh, is true uh, from from my personal experience. And, and frankly, that's that's more than you can expect from many tabletop RPGs these days. Um, there's a foreword here from Dave, which is nice, uh, explaining pretty much what I just said. Right. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and, and move beyond this section because he wrote this session specifically to get to a specific pun. And I would like to deny him of that pleasure. So instead, we get to the part that uh, that explorers wanted here, uh, wanted to 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 bring up and highlight, which is of course the quotes. And each one of these quotes was written uh, a after we um, said we had written the read the book. Um, I believe this this time now what we're doing may be the quite first time that this book has ever fully been written up to and including the editing pass that went that it went through. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, explore. Uh, where uh, where others uh, fear to tread, shall we? And, and we've got, of course, my quote from uh, as as a veteran game designer, uh, <laughs> the creator of Three Goblins and a Trench Coat of Cats and Corpses, is this game a crime? In a better world, it would be. And if you know one thing about me, dear viewer, it's that I, I do in fact long for a better world, one in which Dave has been uh, properly incarcerated and punished for uh, for everything that we are about to experience in the next few minutes. Um, I mean, Jesus takes a better view, uh, calling it a cry for help. That's fine. He can, he, you know, he's he's more willing to forgive uh, Dave his crimes than I am, I think. Um, Angela, of course, bringing up that every copy of Banana Light should uh, come with a handwritten formal apology from Dave. And look, we, we discussed it. Um, we thought we thought we just, you know, this is now available for purchase, of course, on our itch.io page, uh, for which, of course, I, I should have a link, but I don't. I'm a professional, folks. I'm a goddamn professional. I have it on my personal channel. I don't have it in this one. Wild. Anyway, um, but we did discuss it internally, and we thought we thought that uh, what we could do, for example, is uh, do a multiple tier pricing. So far, right now, you can just buy this game for five dollars. Um, but uh, we were thinking of offering a version uh, at ten dollars, which brings both the game and that handwritten apology, and of course, a fifteen dollar version, which is just the apology, no game. Um, so I, I think we're working on that, we're working with our with our suppliers, and we'll see what we can do about that. Uh, and of course, uh, William Coffing, uh, who of course designed the, the visual design that you're seeing here, all this yellow, 
uh, in, in basically uh, stating that, of course, David has in fact managed to string together a sequence of words into a jumble of sentences that only barely resembles rational thought. And I do agree with with uh, Billy that it is in fact the best we can probably expect from him. So let's let's take a look at the general rules. I mean, we're not going to read. This is not the whole point of the show is not to read the entire PDF for each game, right? But this was short, uh, so we can kind of you know read a little bit. But the, for the other games, we'll we'll breeze through them. But we just we just want to get a feel for them. We want to get a feel for what these games are like. And again, figure out what's so cool. Is there something in the way it handles combat, or in the way it handles uh, uh, the, the plot, or the way that the characters are designed, the different types of characters, or even just the setting or the very concept. Like, what's so cool about this game, right? So, for example, with this game, uh, we're not sure yet. We don't know what what's cool about it yet. Uh, th there may well be nothing, because of course, um, this game is a sin against man and god. So let's see. It, it looks like the basics is, of course, that you know you need uh, you need people. You need people to play, and there are rules. So uh, at least in those levels, it it seems to fulfill the basic requirements. A tabletop RPG, and uh, and we appreciate that. But we, well, you notice that um, you know we have some players, and it gives you some some general advice on how to how to get the players in. But uh, it, it it like many games uh, goes into the trend of naming the game master, uh, giving it a specific name. You know, some games will go like the storyteller or the dungeon master, or of course the game master is a classic, uh, the director, uh, the facilitator, and of course in this game the big banana and they won't be referred to as the big banana throughout the rest of the book so you may as well be prepared for that um and uh the basics are of course you know you'll make characters it explains it right here you'll make some characters uh and uh and then the you decide what kind of future you come from simple enough um and then the big banana big, 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 the big banana uh that's gonna that's gonna trip me up a few times tonight isn't it uh we'll refer to the it's not going well chart and the rest is up to them. So here's the thing: there's there's charts in this, and everybody does love a good chart. So let's let's go ahead to the next pages in our little uh, our little abomination here, and and figure out. Can I get to the next page? Why are you not uh, taking me to the next? Take me to, there we go. And see what what the hell we're dealing with here. Now, this section here, it's the end of the world as we know it. We'll change time. Oh, there's more. Oh, Stevedore, my friend. There's always more. You, you cannot escape. There's, there are things happening. There are things happening tonight. There are things happening tomorrow night. There are things happening on Saturday night. And, and by the way, Explorers Wanted, I, I, I think we may actually just move this show to Thursdays. So it's going to be Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. It's just fandible nights. Kind of like Baywatch nights, but uh, a lot less shirtlessness unless we can get Jesus on the show. I think if we get Jesus on the show, I, I can convince him to take the shirt off. So uh, you may want to subscribe or, or sign up on the Patreon for that. Um, but we, I think we can make it happen. I believe in us as a community. We can get shirtless Jesus up on, on one of these shows. So yes, there is this happening right now in which we examine PDFs. Right? You were there. I believe you were there uh, when, you, when, this, when, this, uh, when this game uh, was in fact implanted, Banana Light. And, and it, it, it became a whole thing. Look at this. There are pages to it. Multiple pages. It's wild. What your people have done to David's brain. Now, this particular f part uh, appears to be some kind of uh, explanation about the setting. This is what we call in the business uh, fluff. Um, and there's an explanation here, and it's, it's done in the, in the shape of some kind of conversation. Uh, he, 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 he relies on this uh, sort of narrative framing of, of, of him having a direct conversation with the reader, when in fact, in fact, and I can, I, 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 I can vouch for this, He's merely talking to himself. Um, so instead of, uh, of reading through this page, which you may already have if you're a fast reader, we're gonna kind of um, just kind of bump up because there's there is a full explanation letting you know that this is in fact a grim dark game, right? Um, also, it's a game about bananas and, and time travel, which sounds great. There's a doctor, Doctor Musa. And there's uh, there's a whole explanation as to why uh, time travel involves lights. And there's there's a set of uh, organizations uh, which uh, become, you know, I, that happened on Tuesday. But I believe in us. Again, I have, I have faith. All right. I've, I've been watching a lot of anime. I've been watching a lot of anime. And I think I think that through the power of friendship, we can make this work. Stevedore. Um, so these organizations, which, of course, 
are uh, acronyms, which I'm not going to give Dave the satisfaction of reading out loud, um, are red, blue, green, and yellow. Uh, and because of reasons, the other three teams, blue, green, and red, no longer exist. And now just Team Yellow, which of course uh, it happens to be the color of a banana, uh, is the only one that exists. And then he provides a TLDR and a TLDR TLDR version. So we're just gonna we're just gonna read real quick the TLDR TLDR version, which of course says uh, the setting for this game being that the world is completely screwed unless people can go back in time and unscrew it. You are those people. I think I think that's pretty succinct. That gets to it. That is. You know how there's you know, the elevator pitch, right? The elevator pitch would be this part here. Here we go. You can get through. You can get through all this. You can get through all this in in a short elevator ride, right? Maybe ten floors or so. You can get all this out. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna kind of go uh, a motor. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, um, micro micro machines, like the micro machines guy. There we go. Ah, uh, dating myself. The, those are the kinds of uh, relatable references. That the youths of today uh, really look for in their Twitch streams, and I here I am making them. Um, so, so this is the elevator pitch. This, this is the somebody is walking past you on the sidewalk, and you're holding up a sign, and uh, and and smell uh, just uh, undescribable, and are yelling it out at people, right? So there's a sign. There's a sign. It's got a banana on it. And you're like, the world is completely screwed unless people can go back in time and unscrew it. You're those people. You're those people. That's that's kind of the uh, I think that's that's really the vibe that we're going for here. And um, throwing dice at passerby exactly as Boris wanted. Exactly. As, um, I think really David would be proud of, of, of if that's the way you approach people with this game. It's kind of like just throw it at people and hope hope that what happens. It is a pretty good TLDR, TLDR thing. Agreed, Stephen. Because in fact, you didn't read it because it was too long. Uh, so there we go. We're all on the same page. But now we go, speaking of the next same page, let's go to the next page. There's a banana around down my head. Um, so we've got character creation. It looks like character creation has three steps, uh, or rather four, four steps. And I see what he's doing here. I see what he's doing here, right? He's, he's, he's obviously cribbing off my... Uh, my, you know, there you have two stats, uh, uh, kind of methodology. Nice, nice, nice work, Dave. Nice work, Dave. But let's see. So he, he even created an acronym for the character creation process. The man has has a disease, um, and the steps, of course, are discipline, interest, and equipment, aka die. Uh, and so each of the three sections, you've got your discipline, you've got your interest, and you've got your equipment. And so disciplines are basically your job. It's an homage, if you will, exactly. Uh, disciplines are basically, for what I can tell you, your job. Um, you, you, you might be a doctor, you might be a thief, and we, we, give, we have some examples of disciplines further on. And if your discipline applies, you get a bonus to your die rolls. We'll, we'll look at the, we'll look at the uh, mechanics shortly. Hey, Eagle D20, welcome in, my friend. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Uh, you're just in time to watch me continue to, to just uh, point and, and, and look concerned at this game, Banana Light, written by our very own David Donnelly. And uh, and then the if, but of course, of course, Theodore, if you t add the last step, your acronym becomes Diane, which is not a word, uh, turns out. Uh, so that's probably why he didn't do it. Now you see, you see he, he's, it's an homage, but also, also it's a, it's an interesting cop-out is what, what I would call it. Interesting cop-out. So you got your discipline, that's your job as far as I can tell, right? And then we've got um, your interest. Your interest is kind of like your hobby. It's like your your, your personal thing, right? Uh, it, it seems to be. Uh, here we go. So the interest of volunteers is something that they do in their spare time, regardless of what kind of waking nightmare the world they come from may be. So culinary arts, card tricks, or anything. And again, just like the discipline that gives you a bonus to your roles if whatever you're trying to do falls under your interest. And then you've got equipment. And the, the game explains that, of course, you need a three-day-old banana, and three-day-old is very important. That's a specific color. You would know that if you'd read the thing, um, but you really shouldn't, though. So, um, but also, you can get other equipment, devices, and the, here you can go with whatever you want. It, it, they go like you can, uh, you, you can basically uh, uh, whatever that device if it fits into something you're doing. Again, you got, you got, you got a bonus. Pretty straightforward. So far, system simple, uh, systems uh, uh, straightforward. 
Um, let's see what happens once we actually get to how the dice work. We can see if in fact that holds up. So far, eh, not bad. Um, uh, however, and here we go. Uh, unfortunately, due to budget constraints and a system of paperwork well described as labyrinthine and perfectly described as bat fuck insane, division of these objects, these items, this equipment, is random and players must roll on the equipment table. Yeah, we have an equipment table. Heck yeah. Uh, Diane is dying, seen through the lens of dyslexia. Checks out. This clearly means that it's dinner time and I should be getting something to eat. You should, in fact, get something to eat. Explorers want to suggest a banana, which is not the worst idea. Just be careful if it's three days old or you might find yourself traveling through time unexpected. Um, and of course, then step four, the name, which, you know, we all know is it's the thing that we all hate. Yeah, I'm going to turn on that AC again. It's getting hot in here. Uh, and I'm not going to take off all my clothes. So apologies if there is a a bit of a when I speak uh, going forward. But you may have noticed that the world is on fire. Uh, my world's on fire. Uh, I don't know about yours. But, um, you know, I'm going to just go ahead and. Uh, there we go. And uh, I just turned my AC back on before I die. And. Hey, let's look at the next page. What do we got here? Uh, we got, yeah, you go. Yeah, the guess is, is going to be there regardless. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I could probably, like, once I get a proper boom mic and I think I can like narrow like a little, you know, bone of sound or whatever, I think that's going to make a big difference. So I um, have to look for a good yet affordable because I don't want to spend too much money on that. Um, but a, a decent little, I have a, I have a little boomish mic around here. But it's, it's, eh, anyway, long story short, this is not the Dan Deals with the Audio Equipment podcast. That This is the Dan Looks at Whatever's Going On Here podcast. And what what's so cool about the character creation in Banana Light? Well, we've got some example disciplines. So this is not, this is, these are example disciplines. Uh, you are encouraged to make up your own, I, I noticed. But you've got uh, a got total of, look at that, seven jobs, seven character classes in a pdf that's barely 10 pages long that's that's impressive you got your soldiers you've got your scientists you got your bootlickers that's that's you know that's that's a class you got your engineer your criminal your imposter which i claim i like you know you're not really you're really not supposed to be here uh, and of course a doctor a doctor more if they continue to the next page why would they no no that's chart o equipment and complications no no the, the character the disciplines are all just contained somehow within these two pages and of course it's a picture of a banana out on my head um but with all of these with all of these uh despite the description and uh, you know we appreciate the description because they are full of jokes we we here at fandible appreciate the jokes um but other than that the real difference between them is just you know what kind of things you'll get that plus one bonus and your roles too of course so that simplifies the process you can basically make up with like oh, a bus driver all right well then you are uh, relate you have plus ones to driving buses or anything related to the bus driver uh, vocation if you will. so so you can make up your own these are example disciplines are some good examples now in the next one we go straight to the chart equipment now you'll notice he gives you very few examples of how to do uh we saw in the interests of step two uh, you are you're meant to make those up yourself this this i feel uh is a missed opportunity for yet another table uh so hopefully in a future edition uh, in which we can uh, basically make uh, Dave uh, just, you know, worry and, and stress out more by, by having him write more stuff. Um, I, I think a, a, a page of uh, a sample interests would not go amiss. But for now, it's fine. You can make those up yourself. I'm sure you, you have a very imaginative brain. We're very proud of you. Your mom says you're great. Um, we do have a chart of equipment, so we have an exploration explanation here of what why uh, the, 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 the word the phrase tiramisu of science is used, um, you know, with, for more or less uh, effect, really. And then we've got a set of items. Let's just look at a couple of random ones. Uh, why don't I roll a d12? Oh, because I don't have one handy at hand. Hey, hey, here's an idea for future streams. I should have some kind of dice rolly thing that I can just put up on screen, whether the camera showing actual dices being rollied or a, um, you know, or, or some kind of widget on the screen. I should do that. But since we can't do that, 
let's just uh let's pick one at random it's gonna look away uh, click what am i clicking okay looks like i'm on next to five so uh we're looking at a map and or blueprints that only show you directions when you're too intoxicated to read it i like it i like it and let's uh let's let's pick something later here uh ooh, a helmet that renders the wearer invisible but makes it so they cannot see or hear while wearing it i like these items and they're good examples for you to make up your own of course but this this is a good and of course remember for equipment we've established these are random you can't just choose one of these um so that's good to know it's a i think a hint of uh hint of the old yo ye oldie numenera if you will um in terms of just weird devices that do weird shit. and i like it. and now we get to the part here where uh the gm or the, the big banana if you will uh gets to have a little bit of fun there's a whole set of circumstances you can roll another d12 and and you know i i i want to say that i am i am i'm pleased to see that it's a a 12 the d12 you use because the d12 doesn't get enough love it really doesn't unless you're a barbarian in dnd you really don't use the d12 as much as you could and most people including your uh, poor servant here i usually default to something like six options or ten options those are more common dice but here dave decided to go with a 12 sided dice and and you know it's a bold move it's a bold move cotton uh let's see where it takes oh hey i can't i'm gonna just go ahead and do something real quick hi how you doing folks i was just closing the door um so that my 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 sweet sweet cold air uh does not go away um where were we so we're gonna we can't roll it at 12 side desk. let's let's look at one thing how many pages of this do we have how many three pages so let's choose one from each page and take a look at them real quick uh i like oh this was this one is one of my personal favorites number two. Oh boy through a sequence of temporal issues with acronyms galore one of the volunteers possesses the body of someone already on the boat without knowing anything about them the person that replaces any responsibilities on the vessel it's always outside of the volunteer skill set now one thing we did kind of skip earlier uh because it was not part of the tldr tldr there's part of the tldr is that the event that you're going to to do to deal with happened on a boat so whenever your players arrive and begin the game they're gonna be on a boat and they'll have a banana uh although apparently uh option number three so let me going with just one per page this one is, is just a perfect segue uh is that the good news is everyone arrived safely the bad news is the trip home might be anything but the banana is transported to some random part of the ship and depending on the superstitions of the crew may be thrown overboard if it is not found quickly by volunteer by the volunteers uh so keep your banana close or keep your enemies closer let's look at um who we got we got we got aliens you could have aliens and alien abduction i like that extraterrestrials have taken an interest in the ship or let's see what we got Ooh, freaky friday although this one of course dave manages to date uh dave check name check himself uh and you know what i feel like that shouldn't be rewarded so let's look at freaky friday instead uh the volunteers are about to get a lot more familiar with each other all right so they're switching they're switching bodies i like it look I, I, I'm, I'm i'm a sucker i'm a sucker for a good body switch uh i mean who isn't right so so these are the weird things that could go wrong so you start the adventure you're on your boat you've got to fix whatever's wrong with time and uh and and something went wrong further no plantain <laughs> survives contact with the enemy i like it i like it and now we finally get to the mechanics which is is it checks out checks out this is around the part of, of, a, of your average game where you would expect to get to the mechanics uh so let's see here and again it is framed as some kind of conversation between dave and, and a um a a hypothetical reader as if someone uh would right um so uh, even even we find uh interestingly that even in in this uh mental uh conversation with himself that dave is having uh, you'll notice that 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 this uh second dave uh you know the lowercase dave uh still managed to write an uppercase that, that he hates him which uh, you know dave if you need to talk, I'll be there on Saturday. Uh, not not before though. Um, so let's look at the mechanics. So it looks like we've got a two d six system. Okay, so we got ourselves a nice little bell curve of probabilities. That's good to know. 
the dice need to add up to equal or more of the difficulty decided by the big banana, commonly between 6 and 12. Interesting, interesting. Now, circumstances may occur that even higher difficulties can be applied by the decision of the big banana. And only the players roll dice. Again, kind of like Numenera. Um, the big banana bearing the heavyweight of genius we need to run this game. Okay, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, so, oh, okay. So, it, look, thankfully, thankfully, uh, Dave has um, woven some uh, some some useful GM advice, which I, I find is, is the kind of advice that really will work, not just for this game, but really any kind of tabletop RPG. My cat is escaping it. I'm back. Um, but he's managed to, to interweave certain, um, my cat, uh, interweave certain, certain, uh, GM advice that is very useful. So, so here, for example, um, if there's any sign that a player may have a fleeting awareness that they could be doing something, literally anything else with their time, I recommend the big banana look directly at them and say, and then the griffin attacks you. Are there griffins in the game? That's up to you, but I find they are ideal motivational tools in times of need. And I think this is great advice really for, for any game. Uh, if you've got players that are kind of flagging, uh, they're not showing interest or on their phone, they're distracted, whatever. Nothing gets a player back on track like a Griffin attack. Griffin attack. Uh, if you know the reference I'm going for there, um, I'm sorry. Uh, ooh, so here we, okay. So here's, here's an interesting thing. At the beginning, and let's kind of go back here, you'll notice that it says that you'll get uh, a additional, oh, so it's one additional plus one die. And here's like additional, oh, so it does say additional die. You saw the plus one, and I thought it was a plus one to the roll, but no, 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 it is clear there is an additional die that gets added. Interesting, okay, good, good, good. Uh, so that is in fact clear, and I retract the, the criticism that I was going to say. Uh, Dave, uh, I, will, I will find some other way to punish you. So you get extra dice, which means it is possible to get results higher than 12 should the big banana decide to punish his players that way. Uh, good. I like it. I like it. And, and thankfully, stuff stacks. If you got both discipline and interest uh, that apply, you can get extra die. And presumably, if you've got equipment, yeah, that you could be rolling up to five die, which is not quite shadow run levels, but it's, it's a respectable number of dice in your hand at the same time. Um, so that is cool. I like that. And then we've got a couple of options for rerolls. Um, so let's see here. We got a reroll. So you can try this again. So you can do a. You can manipulate time itself. This can manifest as anything from a matrix style bullet time moment to finding a note from a future self telling them to duck. Using a reroll also always results in a bad token being added to the timeline. Bad. Okay. So this is used to introduce bad tokens. Good to know that those exist, uh, and hopefully, apparently, uh, they will be described later. Great. Uh, let's see. The banana and fix this does something. So apparently, the banana is indestructible. That's that's good. That's actually a nice little uh, 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 run around to the fact that bananas are generally not not not, not indestructible at all, um, and and could end the the, 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 the adventure really quick. Um, Okay, yeah, you, everybody needs to have the banana, or everybody needs to be in contact with the banana holder to, to end the game. Interesting. And if you, if everybody is not in contact, uh, you will get another bad token to the end result. Okay, so good to know. So when the game is over, everybody needs to be in physical contact with whoever is holding the banana. And for every person who's not in physical contact with the banana holder, more bad tokens happen. Okay, good to know. Hey, death and dying. Every time volunteers hurt, and that volunteers remove one die from their pool. Interesting. Until the end of the scene or they are healed. Interesting. Okay. So let's see. So, and if you reach zero dice, you might die. But then you can get an FYI and fix it. So here's another thing. And this is this is where the time travel comes in. Besides, besides the the, the reroll, the basic reroll of just, you know, doing manipulating time. You can also have a future you intervene in there uh, and, and show up. This only really happens when you're about to die. And a future you comes through and, and gets you out of the way or takes the hit for you or something like that. Uh, and, and then you don't die. But, you know, cool. I like not dying. And, of course, that brings yet another bad 
token. So now we get to talk about the bad tokens and the good tokens. All right, let's see. So the, so really, so this is a part here, and those of you who are familiar with um, uh, what's in the game, um, uh, it starts with an F. You know where I'm going here. It's not Fandible. It's uh, Fiasco, right? Fiasco has a mechanic in which at the end of the game, you add up like good dice and bad dice and 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 the end of the story the end of the game the fiasco is 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 determined by the types of you know, good dice or bad dice so th this looks like a mechanic that was that was uh uh shamelessly stolen or, or at the very least uh, heavily inspired by fiasco and knowing dave and knowing that he loves fiasco as well as he does i i, I i'm i'm gonna go ahead and say holy crap team of the unicorn welcome in that was a hey i have an alert I didn't know I'd install the alerts for this. Hey, welcome in. Thanks for the raid. Uh, oh, oh, uh, well, we're, we're looking at a very badly made game. Um, I, I actually, it's, 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 well, it's very well. Done. I, I, I love Dave. I love Dave. And, and this is a well done game for, for the most part. Um, but let's see we're, we're getting near the end of it. Yeah. Because, uh, as you'll see at the end here, uh, right above my head, uh, this game is incredibly stupid and, uh, and, um, whatever anyway hey this is fun hey i hope i hope it is i hope it is uh, i'm certainly enjoying myself uh, so let's see so we got good tokens and bad tokens uh, at the end of the name and so you get good tokens good tokens are rewarded to the players succeeding in the goals of the mission uh also given by the big banana for stupid actions that make sense of the time to the volunteer letter situations brought on anything that makes you laugh it makes you laugh and it makes people glad to be there and the big banana should award a good token because i sure as hell didn't write all of this for people to have a bad time good point my friend good point so basically the the big banana should just be handing out good tokens whenever people are having fun i like that um as with any game where you're supposed to hand out xp or hand out uh fate points or stuff like that uh the trick with that is always of course remembering um to do so but but it's it's good to know that it's there and then bad tokens happen of course when uh, when you use like an FYI or a triangle. So basically when you do rerolls, you get. Hey, welcome in Ray Van Dan 80. Welcome new follower. I like this sound. This sound is, is, is I don't know why my alerts for my channel are not being loud enough for me to hear. I had it. I had a, I had a subscription today uh, and, and I did not call them out. And I, sh I next stream. If I see them, I will have to extra thank them. They subscribe for six months, which is wild. Um, I'm not saying any of you has to do that for this channel, but you know. If you know, you know. Also, I'm I'm looking, I know a uh, Patreon, for those of you who are Patreon supporters, uh Patreon has a way to to, to meld with Twitch or something. And um, so I'm looking into that. I'm looking into that. Um I, I think I think off the top of my head, my 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 main plan is probably gonna be that if you're at the 10 level or higher. A uh, ten dollar, sorry, level or higher, you probably get a Twitch subscription like rolled in with your with your already uh, thing, or you could subscribe over there at five and then it was five on Twitch, something along those lines. I, I would love to roll the Twitch subscription in for free, uh, just at the normal five dollar level, but like we, you know, Twitch takes a cut. So anyway, uh, let's see. So yeah, okay. So so once you get your good tokens and your bad tokens then okay so you go around the table you go around the table and you narrate and if you've got more good tokens than bad tokens then the effects on the future of your adventure were positive if you get more than bad more bad tokens then the effects on the future were negative very straightforward and of course for every one good or bad token you go around the table here describing how the timeline got better or worse so it is, it is at its core of course a storytelling which is which is really what we want right? uh with the game you want to be able to tell some fun stories uh, and, and yeah, and then 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 the game is over, and hopefully it's a little happier than they entered. So I like it. I like it. And then we go, okay, yeah. And then apparently we uh, we you know we may have missed a few Patreon donors. Well, would you, this is this is this is um, not so much aspirational as just more like if you know if, if you are a five dollar Patreon uh, subscriber and and you helped us with with this, um, we'll autograph it for you if you're, we see you at a con. How's that? Um, anyway, that. That was banana light. 
uh, the, the this month's uh, this quarter's rather, I guess. Uh, every I don't I don't know how often do we release uh, notebooks anymore? It's every two months, every three months. I forget. I forget. We we were originally doing once a month, but it was just a little bit too much. It turns out that doing stuff like this takes time and effort. We had gods. Um, but that was the game. That was Dave's Banana Light. And okay, so so so, folks on the on the chat, on the, if if you have any opinions, I, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, for myself, I, I I like it. It's simple. It's it's got it's got it's got it's a bare bones RPG very much, but it's got uh, everything you need. It's got a really basic sort of like action system. It's got it's got a really uh, you know straightforward way to to have varied characters with varied skills. Um, it's got um, a fairly uh, simple mechanics, and of course, in, in, in a setting that's very restrictive, but in the good way, right? Because you're always going to be a group of time travelers arriving at a boat, and there's a banana. Go. Um, and so, uh, uh, if I wanted to spend time and effort, I would get a second job. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and yeah, I like it. It's it's a it's a nice. It's got it's got notes. It's Describing it kind of like a flavor, right? It's got, hmm, it's got notes of Numenera with a with a uh, undertone of fiasco, uh, and and I I like, I like, um, you know, it's 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 again uh, also indicative of, of Dave's many uh, many mental issues. But overall, though, it's a good game. Um, if you're not already a a Patreon subscriber, uh, you, you should be because then you'll get it for free, and eventually this will be on itch, uh, uh, like the rest of our games for about five bucks. And now, with maybe 17 minutes left in this stream, because I was really planning to only go for an hour, uh, we're going to take a very quick look at Gun and Slinger. I, I thought thought uh, it was going to be ad crazy. It's bananas. Thank you, Steven. Or thank you. Uh, I thought Dave's was going to be... We, we did get into more of a detail with Dave than, than I originally expected, because, of course, I have had some, uh, some behind the scenes uh, on that. But... Now with Gunslinger, we're going to try and go quickly, which is a shame because actually this is a very, this is, first of all, a much bigger game and also a very well detailed. And what we can do, Seance, welcome in, Seance knows, and thanks for gifting the tier one sub to T with a unicorn. Much appreciated. Um, and uh, let's let's take a look at Gunslinger because this one, I got this one, I backed it on the Kickstarter and I've been very happy with it. Um, I haven't gotten to play it yet. I really love the look of it. And I really haven't dove deep into it uh so what we might do <laughs> i say i'll say those no. welcome in i love the little little yeah kitty that's amazing um let's 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 first of all this cover holy crap i love the colors i love the art uh covered by sadia bees uh who, who i follow on twitter by the way and it's 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 hilarious because every time i see her name uh i i read sad babies that's what it that's what it's what it's so what's I mean? What's great about the previous game was is that it's it's on edge for five dollars. It's actually a good game. I don't know what's so great about this one yet, Stevedor. We are we are examining. We're, we're trying to figure it out. We're trying to figure it out. Look, most of these are going to be PDFs that I've never opened. Sorry, I've never opened before. And we're just kind of taking a quick look at them, kind of like you would if you were gathered with your friends around the table and one of them went like, "Hey, we should probably play this sometime." And just slap that book down on the table, and then you'll go like, "Oh, let me see you, dude. Take a look." Uh, look through the pages and go like, oh, check it out. You can play a uh, blah, uh, and, and kind of discuss that. That's, that's that's kind of what we're hoping to do. Uh, so let's go with Gun and Slinger. Uh, let's let's dive into it and see what the concept is. At first glance, there appears to be a gun and or a slinger. Let's see what that's about. So okay, so the author of course is Nevin Holmes. Very good. Special thanks. Okay, we got a nice little table of contents, and this is this is part of what I wanted to. Uh, why I think we might actually uh, continue talking about Gun and Slinger next week. Because first of all, I don't have that much time. I have about 15 minutes left of stream time. And after that, it's it's late around here. And I would like to like not be up too late. Um, these, I'm trying to keep these streams to about an hour. Uh, because I'm old and I get tired easily. <laughs> um, but this, this game was kickstarted and it met several stretch goals. So besides the main game, the Gun and Slinger game... Uh, there were apparently three uh, additional sort of like variations. The Demon, uh, designed by Adira Stattery, who, by the way, I, I had the pleasure of uh, of playing with at, I believe, was Big Bad Con a couple of years ago. Uh, I tried a couple of their games, and they, they were absolute delight. 
um, Sword and Bearer by Viditya Boletti and Mech and Pilot by Pamela Punsaran. Um, so I, I think we might just today just take uh, a quick look at Just Gun and Slinger. And then next week, uh, when we take a look, when we continue this, we, we might try and take a look at the at the bonus ones uh, to start with. We'll see. We'll see how we'll see how far we get. Um, so let's go ahead. So we've got a nice table of contents. Very simple layout. I like it. Uh, we've got a few, got us some safety tools. That's good. Good. Always include safety tools uh, in your games. And we'll take a look at those real quick before we move forward. Uh, okay, we got our setting information starting on page 14. We got the setting, days and nights, lands and graves of the past, etc., etc. We talk about touchstones and the twist, which is bold. It seems to be important. Uh, then we guess, I guess this is the system, the resolution system. I guess this is what we roll. Have to look at that. Uh, old session of combat violence and several pages later, death. Uh, tools and trinkets. Okay, so item tables, I assume. Uh, and then, okay, the game prep, beginning your journey, player of characters. So as far as I can tell, and we'll, we'll look at this shortly, uh, this is effectively a three-player game. You've got your, your storyteller, your maestro, as this game calls it. And then you've got somebody who plays the gun and somebody who plays the slinger. So uh, so that in and of itself, the setting limits your player base, right? You're, you're limited to three. This looks nothing like your game. No, Dave, you missed the whole thing. Um, you, you should know that we, we all voted and uh, you've been kicked off the island. Um, the character advancement, the DM section, and sample scenarios. Good stuff. And then, of course, the stretch goal. Let's see. Ah, oh, look at this. Look at this. Some beautiful design. I love the, the lettering here. Gun and Slinger is an RPG geared for short, episodic sessions about a weapon and a wanderer. This is like the TLDR. Uh, ma a maestro. So that's that's the, the storyteller. And two players, Gun and Slinger, set out into a dead planet mutated by a god's forgotten child and hunt strange bounties, investigate the world and unlock hidden powers. During play, they seek to learn the nature of what's hunting the slinger, figure out why the gun is sentient, and discover how the world died. I like it. That's a solid little paragraph that just encapsulates the setting of the game, the players, and, and what they're going to do really well. Bravo. Well done. I like this. I'm, it's got me interested. It's a nice hook. I dig it. And again, here we go. This visual design. It's simple, but I like it. This is this is setting. This is the fluff. Uh, but it's good fluff. It's good fluff. And I like. I love the symbol. I actually back this, and I do have a physical copy of this game. And and it came with a sticker of this symbol here, uh, which which I I really dig. I haven't put it on anything yet because it's too pretty. I don't know what to put it on yet. Um, eons ago, the sky shattered and something ate the moon and stars, leaving us with only our sun, a small cluster of planets, and a new twisted moon. Something birthed from the sky eater, fell to our planet, and began to twist and warp it. It was the end of our world before anyone living could remember. So you're basically playing a post-apocalyptic game. Many generations later, our people's remnants wander the twisted land and fight the bioluminescent, night-crawling creatures searching our castles and cities' ruins for ancient magic and technology to help us survive. The brave and hopeful work to keep our pocket-sized towns together and alive. Now, many years after our stars were devoured, you find yourself searching the ruins with your new partner. I hope you find what you're looking for. Okay, that's that's good. That sets us up. We know safety tools very well. Uh, we're not going to delve into detail on these. Uh, hopefully, you are already familiar with them. If you're not, any game that has safety tools, you should always read them. They're super useful, especially if you're playing with people uh, that, that, that you don't have that, that close rapport. You don't know what lines or veils uh, you can uh, you can cross. Uh, so this is this is good advice. And this is John Stravropoulos, Dave's tool, the X card. Uh, we actually know John. Uh, we, we've met him a few times. Good people. Good people. And the X card is a classic mechanic. I like it. Okay. So we've got we've got some examples even. That's better. Some links to to uh, hey, good good I like this all right your basic acknowledgments including land acknowledgments not bad at all okay this this part I saw this before There's, I lied I did I did open this PDF up once because I was you know I was trying to figure out why it was breaking my computer uh, it wasn't it turned out it wasn't that it was actually my webcam um, fixed by now obviously um, agenda so agendas okay so this page. I like it. I like it. And I, I would like to see more of this in other games. 
because it it, it, it states uh, your agenda. It states what you in your role within the game uh, should be trying to do sort of out of character and in character as well, right? So the gun and the slinger, the two gun and slinger players uh, have an agenda to put themselves in danger, search for what they want, leave people with stories to tell. The gun has the specific agenda to be an extension of a slinger's arm and an agent of the strange. While the slinger has the agenda to be the hammer that sparks the gun and an agent for change. Well, the maestro, the storyteller here, uh, use the twist interestingly, create intrigue and drama, make the world threatening, and then all together do what's most interesting, learn about the world, and escalate imminent dangers. I, I, I like this. I like this. I like this a lot. It, it gives you an idea of like, all right, if you're going to like what, what, again, what your role is within this role playing game. And I, I, you know, there's something to be said for just complete open world and everything, but I like it when it gives you some level of guidance uh, in, in its guidance in this place, in this case, that really is meant to bring you into the mindset of the world that this game is. So that's, that's dope. Speaking of the world, nice segue. So we've got a setting element. So this is some like a weird twisted. There's magic, there's technology, there's like this twist, capital T twist that changes the game. Uh, dim, dim nights illuminated only by the omnipresent pale blue moon. The stars have been eaten. Only the last sun feeding the weird plant life. It's cool. And of course the moon, there's a sky. That's cool. Like lands and graves of the past. So, so this is, and again, right now we're seeing, uh, I'm going to compare a lot of things to Numenera, I suspect, uh, but we're seeing, some, we're seeing some, some, some remnants of that, of like, there was a past world, there was an old world that we, uh, that, 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 that has now been destroyed, uh, and, and, uh, we're in the post-apocalypse of it, that's cool, forests of trees and fungus, swamps of twisted creatures, we've got technology, oh, oh we got magic tech. All right, I'm in, I'm in. The moment you've got Magitech, I don't care what else your game is about, I'm in. You fucker, I'm in. All right, so we got technology infrastructure, so we got the past, we got, okay, yeah, 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 we've, we've got weird science, we got Magitech, magical technology, circuit stream, electrical currents, uh, reclaim magical remnants, okay, I, I, I love, I love this. It's our equivalent if a wizard did it, and I like it. Also, this game is very much like, it's not about tables, examples it's about setting things up giving you just a couple of paragraphs that really seem to uh just uh ev evoke what they're going for and then letting you run with it see like there's factions and threats and there's just just two pages you got the twist and the weird stuff and i'll talk about that later and then independent assembly just townships uh, bandits etc and then scholars Ooh, title, Screenskeeper, studies the twist keeper, studies the twist in depth, and the mind keeper, studies the twist's mental effects, general mental health. Interesting. Okay, again, I can continue really liking the art. Touchstones and tone. So this is, okay, so this is like, again, tone. Oh, okay, okay, this is, this is the inspirations. So this is the kind of stuff that you'd want to see if you're playing this game, to kind of get a feel for it, the, the stuff that has the same vibes. Uh, so Nausicaa, of the Valley of the Wind, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Trigon, Alien Landscape, Strolls with Destructive Nature, Fighting for Survival in Harsh Lands, Pitch Blacks, Horrifying Darkness and Violent Monsters, Subnautica's Alien Flora and Fauna, Outer Wilds, Unsubtle Existentialism, and Fireside Guitar Plucking. Good to know. I like this. And uh, actually, one thing that I noticed about the game is that while it has a lot of the trappings of Westerns, they actually make a point here we go. Uh, this this paragraph here. I, I wanted to highlight it because I actually kind of like it, these two paragraphs. Actually, these, these three. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But basically, they do make a point of pointing out, point of pointing out that while it does use a lot of the same tropes of a western, and it uses them very well in, in my opinion, um, it, it's not exactly a one to one map because westerns have, uh, while well, they have teams of solitude, as it shows here, solitude, distance, difficult survival. Uh, it really isn't about colonizing new lands. It's not about uh, uh, taking down the natives. It's not about 
uh, that sort of thing, right? You're not a colonizer. You are, uh, you're just, you're just like, you're a gunslinger. You're, you're a survivor. You're an explorer. Um, and, and you are a, solving mysteries rather than trying to establish new things. Exactly. And then, let's see, so the twist. Now we talk about the twist. This is, the, I guess, the, the weird magic. Hmm, we've got three minutes left on the stream. So let's, let's see. Ooh, okay, let's, once we, okay, let's, let's, let's take a look at the twist real quick. And I think with that, we'll wrap up for the night. And I think next stream, we're going to dive a little deeper into the mechanics of it. I wanted to spend more of one, just one, one guy, one, bleh, one night, one game. And I think that's going to be the plan. So next stream, we're going to, we're going to spend some more time with Gun and Slinger. We're going to wrap it up. And in fact, I'll, I'll try and remember to do stuff like, Oh, I don't know. Have links to this stuff. This is this is very much again the 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 the, the concept of, of the the original the pilot episode. Of it. And hopefully, uh, I'm liking this. I'm definitely want to do more of this. I'm enjoying this. I'm having fun right now. Uh, so I think we'll do more of these. Unless you all just on chat right now, uh, just just go like, uh, no, Dan, no, stop. Get help. In which case, I, I will stop and in fact go get help. Um, but for now, for now, I'm, I'm enjoying this. So let's take a look at the twist, and then, and then we'll next week we'll spend some more time in Gun and Slinger, and then after that we'll fall into we'll fall into our, our cadence, if you will. Rebel Radio is typically two players and a GM. Just saying, I don't know if this is a game for Rebel Radio. It might be a little bit too serious. But one way to find out. Tune in next week. Uh, for now, though, let's wrap up by look, taking a closer look at the twist, which appears to be the main sort of evil bad guy force in this game, which I I like. Because it's 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 a mindless force, is it? Let's see. So the twist force scrolls across the land, left behind and forgotten by whatever ate the sky, it touches, claims, and mutates what it wants or perhaps needs. It's hard to discern. It has a real goal, runs on instinct, or perhaps something worse. Its goals and their manifestations. Okay, so the twist is like just a force of strangeness, a force of weird. Oh, it's on every planet in this cluster. Taking many forms, possess and manipulates anything organic and organic, safe internal devices and matter, takes and reshapes things. So it's it's this, yeah, it's this weird mutating force. Interesting. And there's there's the thing, there's the moon. Okay, yeah, so th this here. The twist is definitely related to the new moon that the thing that ate the sky left behind. But there's likely more to it than that. The twist owns the night. There are novel, largely nocturnal bioluminescent flora and fauna not all are aggressive terrible horrors some are just natural evolutions who soak up the new moon's light so it's like this weird mutating sorry this weird mutating force creatures the twist wait creatures and the twist touch wilds okay uh so yeah free range to create your own moss yeah okay so so this is again very yeah it really only gives you like two sample monsters no stats so we'll get, I'm, I'm curious what the system in this game is, which we'll get to again next week. Be sure to tune in because I'm loving the setting, but it is, it is very much a, I love how much they've, 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 they've achieved with just a few paragraphs and some art, right? Because they're not giving you long lists of, uh, see the twist creatures, thanks to how Gun and Slinger works. Those creatures don't require stats and their appearances and abilities are infinitely flexible. They could be entire species or type, singular unique creatures, or even recurring baddies. So I'm, I'm again, I'm really curious about how the system is going to be for this, but it basically gives you free reign to design whatever you want. And it just gives you a couple of samples. Uh, the Gorilla Fungus, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I'm not super impressed by the Gorilla Fungus, although it's a good monster. Um, it just it feels like it's it's missing something given given how imaginative the rest of the setting is um but you know it's got the basics right it's just just a big monkey big gorilla with with fungus and i guess it can use uh those fungal growths to into light sturdy armor i mean okay look a gorilla coming at you especially a gorilla covered in, in fungus that apparently functions as armor is going to be terrifying it kind of feels like orcs yeah there's a, there's an orcness to it right i'm not opposed to orcs um but hmm and especially, it's, it's the thing, you, you contrast it with the Bandit and Hell Dog. And again, it's just it's just a couple of flavor paragraphs, but look at this art. The Bandit leader possessed by the twist gained various gifts manifesting his deep powers. This is less a twist creature and more a person who made a deal with something they didn't understand. 
I mean, look at that. They're they're made of twist. And then they have a pet held dog, a four foot tall fiery hound, summoned with an artifact, small purple coin. Who doesn't want a coin? Have, oh, a 40k orc. You're right. Yeah, they're the gorilla fungus. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they did that on purpose. Um, I'm curious. I, I, I'd love to know. Um, the dog has a lash tongue and it's almost impossible. To, so this is a, I, I love. Again, it just, it just, the design on this one kind of highlights how eh, I'm okay with the gorilla fungus. I don't know. It's cool. But okay, so you've got some some examples. It's it's interesting. Again, it leaves it with a lot of mystery. I don't know if we're going to get <laughs> Fantasy Flight legal team getting a call. Oh, yeah, the lawyers are on their way. They thought they could get away with it, but now, now they can. Um, but it gives you these sample, these sample uh, uh, settings, the sample features, just taste of like, yo, shit's weird, and then kind of lets you run with it. Um, bold move. Let's see how that works out for them as well next week, because it is 10.02 p.m., folks, and I do have to wrap up. But folks, folks, assuming you're still here and you haven't all dropped off a, a long time ago, which if you did, um, fair, uh, absolutely fair, because uh, this is just middle-aged man on the internet talking about tabletop RPGs. <sighs> did you know I'm like streaming basically every day now? This is, this is a thing. It's, it's a deceit. I have. We all we all have our, our foibles, and this is mine. This is mine. So I, I certainly hope folks uh, enjoyed it and, and were at least somewhat entertained. I certainly managed to entertain myself fairly well. And really, in the end, that that's really all that matters. Next week, next week, same bad time, same bad channel. Thursday, uh, around the same time, I suppose. Suspect the handsomest middle-aged man rambling about our piece. Thank you so much, Dave. Thanks. You, you know you're right, and and uh, I will I will uh, uh, you know share uh, uh share the beauty when, I, when i'm there on, on saturday share fandible.com share the beauty the booty beauty anyway folks i certainly hope uh you've all enjoyed this i certainly did but i it's time for me to wrap up as tomorrow is a work day uh and um if you like this you will be more yeah you should watch this back dave the the, the vod will be available and of course this show will be uh saved out to youtube for those of you who uh can't make these late night est shows that's fine i understand that some of you live in parts of the world that are not these um but but it will be available to you you will be able to subject your, this, your, yourself to this and i will i will enable you that stream it or two streaming every day is that a cry for help i hope not to actually live close enough to conceivably lend aid and i am lazy no no it's it is not a cry for help it's not a cry when when I cry for help, you'll hear it. You'll hear it because it'll 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 sound something like help, help. Except you know more desperate, but not not sadder. This is pretty sad. I think, I think it's a base level of sadness. I think I can stay. Um, folks, 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 folks. I really do have to go. Thank you so much, for tuning in. Uh, thank you for the for the gift of subs. Thank you for for tuning in and, and, and hanging out with us. This this is great. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, anybody who's been just lurking. Lurkers on the backbone of Twitch, we appreciate you and we're happy you're here. If you enjoy this, it will happen again next week. I know, I know, you've been warned. Next week, Thursday, 9 p.m. EST, we will finish the rest. Look at this, look at this. so many more pages, so much art, so much gunning, so much slinging. All of this awaits you as we continue dissecting, examining, and kind of poking at Gun and Slinger because we still want to figure out what's so cool about this game so we'll do that next week tomorrow evening tomorrow night around 9 p.m eastern once again i will once again be presenting this lovely visage and this is this voice that y'all can't get enough of uh, as we do a listen along uh to the episode that will be posted uh and available to the public at large tomorrow uh, I, I don't know what it is. I have nothing to do with the posting schedule. I am as surprised as anyone else whenever I see a new Fandible podcast appear in my in my uh, in my feed. It's it's weird, uh, and I am terrified of it. And and I, I help to, I hope to help confront that fear by doing a listen along uh, tomorrow night and, and, and every Friday night uh, of that week's latest episode. And then then yet again on Saturday night. Dave and I will be doing office hours as we have been doing for the past several months. You know what that's about. It's Dave. It's me. We 
talk shit for a couple hours. We answer your questions. Dave comes up with a topic five minutes before and films something on his phone and we roll with it. It's going to be fun. I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm looking forward. To it. So please, today, tomorrow, Saturday, it's fandom. It's all the time. Every single evening on your weekend can be spent with me, with us, just soaking in, soaking in the gosh darn nerdery. And then after that, it's just, it, it, I, I do, I, I, I do abuse. I'm not going to, no, no, the trade, these are the people's trade secrets, Davey. This is, ah, uh, communism or something. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up now. I'm tired. I'm, it's late and I'm, I, I, I uh, need to, need to go get high. Bye folks. Hope to see you all next week. And uh, right, my touch thing isn't working. Where's this thing? How's this thing work again? Help.